Yes, yes. Welcome to the ancient world of tabletop games. I am Agamemnon from the historical documentary Time Bandits. This is a report from a fugitive. Gaming mats are another luxury that I wouldn't normally buy in. For this channel's video requirements, I purchased a whole bunch of them. If you're going to buy this sort of product, ensure that you aren't allergic to neoprene first. The other major consideration with gaming mats is storage space and type. Where the hell will you store yours? How the hell will you store yours? I can't help you with that insanity. One size fits none, but I will set the options before you. There are three main methods of storage. Option one, keep the mat rolled up. Easier to do if you bought the map in a tube. Awfully fiddly if it came packed in a polythene tube of a bag. There's an entire subculture within gaming devoted to the storage, preservation, care, repair, transportation and worship of neoprene gaming mats. How did this cultish state of affairs develop? Gaming mats are often used for playing card games on. Card games like Magic the Gobbling. Magic the Gobbling is the crack cocaine of the card game world, and woe unto ye should ye worship at the financially crippling temple to that endless swirling vortex. I'm not saying Magic the Gathering gobbles your cash more quickly than fire consumes banknotes, but that is what I'm saying. It's not enough to spend money on the cards. If you truly care about the game, you'll sell at least three of your grannies into dubious abattoirs to get your magic fix, and the fourth granny you sell will pay for the accessories. I find it difficult to talk about the game in detail, as I never bought any cards. After being invited to play it, I recognized it for what it was, a right royal proclamation to print money. That goes twice over for the gaming mats, dice, and storage options over in the arcane world of gaming accessories. Speaking of which, this is a combination card and dice box. I use it to store various bits and pieces when I make house calls as the board game doctor. The same company makes a longer product for storing gaming mats and dice in, you automatically find your way to accessories like that if you heed the siren call to buy Magic the Goblin. There is no escape. Plastic or cardboard tubes or those long, sturdy boxes are meant for storage and transportation of gaming mats. If you are lucky, the packaging the mat arrives in will serve as ideal storage for transportation. For video purposes, I'm only interested in storage. Transportation is from one room to another, and is a labour of Hercules, it's true, but I don't let any of these neoprene apples wander very far from the storage tree. Option 2. I've seen examples of people storing their mats on what I can only describe as improvised extra-wide towel racks. Hanging the mats like carpets waiting for a beating doesn't sound great, Let's hope you don't have any easily distracted pets in the house looking for new chew toys. The third option is to store the mats flat. I'd add high up to that storage description, out of the way. These mats are kept on this board, and the board sits on a cobbled together shelf formed out of an old computer desk. The shelf lies perched over three bookcases, and I must climb the stairway to heaven just to bump my head off the ceiling as I reach for the mats. A tall stepladder with a handrail makes me feel as though I am in an arcane archive of eldritch dimensions. And who is to say otherwise? Additionally, the mats are kept under old curtains to ward the dust off. It's all a massive pain and all I do is take a board down and transport it to this table. I have no way of carting a mat out of the building in safety. Those long boxes for mat transportation run 20 to 30 pounds as I record this video. 
though they look as if they'll protect Indiana Jones from a nuclear blast. Neoprene mats are unholy things on mass. Collected in a pile, they bend light waves that stray too close, and that is a board gaming fact. Are there other options? Certainly. If you have the space, give each mat its own vast storage drawer. Should you develop a liking for the designs on display, frame them and hang them on your walls as people do. Use the mats as carpeting or wall coverings to conceal secret rooms. They are cumbersome no matter how you deal with the problem of storing the damn things. Almost all of these mats are general purpose. There'll be a strong image down one side of the mat and plenty of negative space elsewhere, making it easier to see your cards. Here's a specific card game mat for Enchanter's Overlords. This type of mat has dedicated spaces built into the design, showing game flow, providing rules references, and spaces for cards and tokens. It is a game board in all but name. And here's a miniature mat that acts as an individual player board. Going back to a strong example of negative space, this particular mat feels like cloth on the playing surface and not like a rubber mouse mat. It really stands out for that reason. Far more wieldy than the other mats in this stack, it's the only one that would blow away in a stiff breeze, taking all the cards and any unwary players with it. I'm using these mats for video production purposes, adding visual flair to a game. Sometimes that'll be to eliminate the sameness of the black cloth background. At other times I'll add a thematic tie to a game. You need never buy these things. We never bought these items for use during card games, but I like the look of them for use in videos, and so I've ticked off another box on the dreaded gaming accessory list. This keeps a whole side industry afloat. When I speak of thematic ties, I mean a submarine mat for use during a submarine game. It's as simple as that. If I reach for a piratey card game, perhaps a mad little seascape serves its purpose. Several of these mats would easily cover games of tentacular horror. Turning to the east and mats by Dojo Creative Design, I find another card game passed us by. Legend of the Five Gold Rings You'll Have to Sell Just to Enter the Hobby. That's the game's full title in small print on the inside flap of the first card pack it sold. Dojo also sells these dice trays with similar art on them. Another obvious candidate for a samurai-themed mat is a samurai-themed game, and there it is. That's a card and dice game, which raises another point about mats. My views on unadorned tables are well known. Cover your gaming table with a cloth, lest you frighten the horses and the upstairs maid. The gaming cloth and the game mat both absorb the ear-shattering clatter of dice. You'll want to ban liquid refreshments from your game mats, I mean from the table you'll spill those drinks onto. No, don't be precious about your gaming accessories. Yes, preserve your gaming accessories from players who like to juggle with fire. No, don't put your gaming mat in the washing machine. Yes, call the vet if Fido is foaming at the mouth with half a mat dangling from his jaws. One last variation on the game mats. You've seen the general purpose mats used for card games and the specific game board style of mat linked to one game. Here's a multi-purpose gridded landscape for use with role-playing games, again from Dojo Creative Design. I bought these in to see what they were like. I have plenty of card maps available, though those are by Paizo and come with a glossy coating to handle dry erase or wet erase marker pens. That glossy coating plays merry hell with the studio lights and camera arm reflections. I wanted to see what a matte finish was like on a game mat. As I'm not one for using marker pens on gridded cardboard maps, it's no loss to me to switch to a neoprene version you can't draw on anyway. An interesting alternative to the shiny landscapes. And that's your lot. Mats in all sorts of sizes and designs. You can go the whole hog and head to a printing company that'll take your own custom design and turn it into an outsized mouse mat. These accessories needn't be connected to card games at all. 
There's never a crushing need to buy all the best accessories out there. I've shown many an obscure item on this channel that I only bought for this channel. The dice towers featured in every video. Those are props for this channel, as is the giant red 20 cider you see at the end of the video. That's a Magic the Gobbling accessory, a countdown die with the numbers arranged in sequence, making it easy to record numbers without need for pencil and paper. I bought that in purely for use as a prop in videos. If I have to keep track of numbers, I'll use an accountant.